Hello Affinity Designers. Welcome to episode three of Assembling Your Own Comic Toolbox. This is How to Make Kirby Crackle. Let's dive in. Invented by comics legend Jack Kirby in the 1960s and still used today, Kirby Crackle is a collection of black and white dots that conveys a sense of powerful cosmic energy. In Affinity Designer, there's two paths you can follow to create uh, Kirby Crackle. The vector method has four possibilities. One way is to just kind of power through using the ellipse tool and hand create and place black and white dots. This is scalable and specific and very tedious. However, once you've made an initial collection, you can turn that into an asset in your assets panel, pull that out, layer it, and recolor it. That speeds things up, but takes away some of the uniqueness. By filling a page with Crackle and saving it either as an asset or a PNG, you can import it as a texture. The final vector method is to create a repeating uh, textured intensity brush using some Kirby Crackle. Uh, look at some of my other brush making tutorials if you want to know how to do that. I'll put a link in the description. The Pixel Persona offers a completely different way to approach the problem. Just by creating a round brush, you can begin to actually come up with a very cool looking brush right away just by adjusting the scatter and um, size uh, variation. With the basic brush created you can make a duplicate and then by going to the texture tab in the brush editor you can actually add a sub brush. Sub brushes um, can be either round or bitmap. In this case I'm just going to do the round. By unchecking sync size and spacing when you pull up the sub brush editor uh, you can adjust the size and spacing independently of the main nozzle. And so we're going to do basically the same thing we did before, adjust the spacing and size, and then go to the Dynamics tab and adjust the size and scatter. Um, I'm going to set these to random so my mouse will work, but if you have a tablet, you can of course set it to pressure or one of the other tablet-friendly settings. And I'm going to set the settings here to behind current nozzle. You can play around with those settings. I, I found that behind works pretty well. And I'm going to change from Blend to Erase. That gives your Cosmic Crackle uh, a sense of volume and a, a lot more variety. Okay, with that basic brush technique in mind, we're going to jump back into the Designer Persona, and I'm going to create four small brushes that are, have similar elements to them. So begin by creating four dots, and then continue to build on those dots, adding smaller, larger, uh, combined, separate, uh, little floaters outside and just create four brushes that have a little bit of variety to them. Draw four slices in your export persona to export those four brushes and then we're going to import that first of those brushes as an intensity brush and we're going to do the same thing we did with the basic Kirby dot. Uh, turn. This time we can actually add rotation because instead of having a circle we have a uh, unbalanced shape, so rotation will make sense now. Set that to random, and you can see already it's doing, it's going beyond our initial basic round brush because it already has built into it variety, and so you have tiny and large shapes already with each click of the brush. By returning to the uh, brush editor, go to the texture panel again, and we can import those other three brushes and set them to random, and now as you're painting, it's going to click through those four different nozzles at random, which adds a, a greater degree of variety and variability and uniqueness. You can save that and make a duplicate of it, and then in the sub brushes, we're going to add a bitmap, and you can select any one of those four brushes you created. We're going to make a erasing sub brush and turn off the size and syncing, and then go back into the sub brush editor by double clicking on the thumbnail and we can adjust the spacing, rotation, etc. And so we're going to have that same effect we did earlier, but this time with the benefit of the variety. I should mention that in the texture uh, tab, you can add many more brush nozzles, and in the sub brushes, you can include many other sub brushes, and those sub brushes are independent of each other, so one can be negative, one can be positive, and it just creates additional layering with a single stroke of your brush. I want to thank everybody who has subscribed to the channel and also for those who have left comments. That's really encouraging and helpful. If you learned something in this video, give me a thumbs up and consider making a comment or subscribing to the channel. And we'll catch you next time.